Hey everybody, how we doing today? So today's video is the beginner's guide to catching a tarpon number two. Although we're still on the same subject matter as number one, which is go to where the fish are. What we're looking for is a spot where we're gonna find a bunch of tarpon that we just gonna throw our bait in the middle of and catch our first fish. Now we're in the Florida Keys, so we're an island chain that extends out from the mainland 100 plus miles. So we're out in the middle of the ocean in between the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic. So there's nothing else around us in regards to structure out there. So we are a fish magnet. And I can honestly say every square inch of salt water surrounding any of the Keys Islands, a tarpon has swam through there. So it's not a matter of this is going to have to be a tarpon there, there's going to be tarpon. Tarpon have swam air everywhere. The only exception would probably be, be some swimming pool. But we don't want just any locations. We want to maximize our odds for our first tarpon so that we know there's a better chance in this one spot than just this random spot where a tarpon might have swam through there 27 years ago, three months and four days ago. All right, so we're with a little bit of due diligence, some research, a little bit of recon and footwork, all right, we're gonna find our own individual spots. And I'm gonna tell you how. So the two things that we're looking for in this regard are, one, we want water movement. We want large volumes of water movement shifting from the Gulf of Mexico side. Okay, we're not looking for water's way out, but just that's gonna circulate over the Gulf of Mexico flats, because that's where all the food is, and it's gonna funnel that food and that water outtake on an outgoing tide through a channel that goes out to the Atlantic. All right, that's one. The second part we're looking for is some sort of depth. We want a little bit of depth, not a little bit, the more the better in regards to depth. All right, and that's the reason for twofold. One, tarpon are kind of an up feeder, all right? So if you look at their mouths, they kind of open up. All right, so what they like is someplace for free feeding wise is where they can sit at the bottom and water flows above them. They're very lazy and it'll bring food over. When they see something they like, they go up, they suck it down and then they go back down and just hang out there and digest and look for their next meal. Also what it does is it provides security, all right? The keys, okay, is primarily around the land masses is just flat. I mean, from nothing to maybe a foot or two, and that goes out for hundreds of feet. So a 100 pound tarpon that's a foot and a half tall, all right, doesn't survive very well in two foot of water, okay? They are there. I mean, I've got video of those ones where they're swimming right up to me and they've got their fins out of the water because they're so big. And then they see me and then they take off, all right? But that's okay for going for them to go out searching for food and roaming from A to B. But for security safe to feel safer and not be so exposed, as well as a place to kind of rest and just get out of the sun and just kind of hide out, they want that depth. So those are the two primary things that we're going to be looking for. Now, how do you find those? Google Earth or Google Maps. Okay, Google Satellite. That is gonna be your golden ticket to finding spots. Remember, you're, what you're wanting is you want passes that move water from the Gulf of Mexico through some channels and then out to the Atlantic. Got those, okay, then we're good. Now some caveats that you're gonna be looking for is because some of the keys are pretty long north to south. So you've got big channels where that, what I'm looking for, runs through there for two, three, four, five miles. But just any one of those areas there is not necessarily what we're, what we're looking for. It's no different than a concrete canal in a, a big city. It's just man-made, same percentages, just a perfect half tube, and it goes for miles. There's no structure. There's no difference from point A or two miles away. It's just that same slope, okay? we're looking for is somewhere where it does that, but then you can get to a point where it dumps either into a bigger opening or dumps right out to the Atlantic and then the bigger depth. 
and the closer that you get to the dumping to the Atlantic side, the better, because some of those dumping opening ups happen right where the, the middle of the keys are where US-1 is, but then you still have two miles to go before you actually get out to the open Atlantic, all right? With that much opening, it's that same thing. It's not really a magnet for the fish. What we're looking for is those ending outlets that are opening up right out to the Atlantic because those tarpon during like low tides and whatnot are sitting out in the, out in like Hawks Channel. They're out in the Atlantic side. Then when it's feeding time, then they start moving up into those cuts, openings, and outlets, and that's when they're gonna feed when they're hungry, and then when they're not eating, then they can swim out or they go other places, all right? So those are the kind of things that we're gonna look for. Now, you've got your Google Maps and you've checked out four, five, three different spots that you think are good. How do you know, all right? How are you gonna know that that's the, the honey hole that we're looking for? Two different ways, this is what you're gonna do. One, if they're, they're recessed out, they're not accessible, then you gotta go out in your boat or your kayak or whatnot. If it's, if it's by a landmass or somewhere you can access by road or maybe it's a bridge can overlook it, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go sun up, you're gonna go sunset, and you're gonna get either just look or you maybe even bring, bring some binoculars and you're gonna watch those areas. And what you're gonna look for is physically rolling tarpon. Okay, they have coming up and either feeding on stuff, busting, or even just gulping air. Because if you see those, then you know that you found the spot where the tarpon are gonna be, all right? In general, what happens is once tarpon find a kind of location they like, they're gonna sit there, especially if you find the depth. And they'll sit there, and then they'll either come up and grab something for food, which is busting, and you'll see a big splash, or you'll just see them casually coming up, gulping air and going back down and just sitting on that bottom in that same location. So if you look and you see one go, okay, it's 50-50, maybe it's going somewhere and it just rolled there. But if you start seeing consistent rolling in one location or a couple of them rolling here and around there, but in that sort of vicinity, you've got a spot. All right, you've got a golden spot. Then it's just a matter of, you know they're there, now it's just a matter of getting them to eat your bait, okay? Now, a second way, a second way, which some might be seem a little sketchy, but it, it is very effective, okay? And that is scouting and looking, not for tarpon, but for flats boats. And you're looking for flats boats with two or three people on it. And the reason why you're looking for that is those are guide boats. And if you start seeing little packs of areas with guide boats in it, that's a hot spot. That's been a historical hot spot. That's easy place to catch tarpon and it's easily accessible for these guides. And that's where they're gonna go. Um, Cause that's what they want. They wanna get their clients on an easy tarpon that's quick and fast as well as it's easily accessible for them. So they're not burning a ton of gas and wasting a lot of time. And that generally means it's very effective for you as well. So that's the same way as you were scouting out different locations. If you go and the first one, there's no tarpon rolling, you're not seeing anybody. You go to the second one, you look in, you don't see any tarpon, but you see two or three flats boats with two or three people on them, all in some sort of vicinity. And that's kind of the spot that you've, you've seen where it's got pushing current, it's got some depth areas there, some channels or some uh, big just kind of pool areas there and there's guys fishing it on those flats boats even though you don't see the tarpon that's probably a good spot as well me I rank seeing an actual tarpon pretty much significantly higher than the flats boats because it not only will say definitely that a tarpon will be there but also that it's going to give you confidence to know that you put in the work in that one spot there's gonna be an end result there because you know there's physically fish there versus just going to an open water where you don't know for sure and then you put half-heartedly start doing stuff and your results tend to be half-hearted as well. So if those are kind of my key areas to kind of focus in on go to where the fish are. That's how I did it, that's how I learned is just research, check it out, scout it out, all right? It's effective for me on, the, tar on the, the kayak because I go to those areas and I'll hit it. I'll hit it in the morning. I'll hit it in the middle of the day. I'll hit it at nighttime in the evening. 
All right, um, I'm always looking to see watching for rolling tarpon. I say it all the time in my videos prior to the main season. I'm looking for fish, or if I see one rolling, I'm like, boom, I got gotcha. you. All right, if I see a, a tarpon rolling, I know I'm going to catch that fish because I'm going to go to that spot and I'm going to keep putting baits in right in that spot until I get that bite. But anyways, I did go out today and I hit a few different spots to put it on video so you can kind of get a gist of what I'm talking about. But it's still windy and crazy and windy not only makes for bad fishing, but it also makes for bad videos. So I'll put together what I've got so you can check it out. I did uh, spots from the... Um, uh, the Fort Zachary Taylor, right on the corner of Key West and the uh, Key West Harbor, uh, up by through Shark Channel, all the way up to uh, the Bahia Honda Bridge. And uh, you can kind of check out and I explain what I'm looking for. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully it was somewhat helpful. I think these videos will be a lot more helpful once I get a chance to get on the water. Uh, I think we've got one more day of wind and then it's drops down significantly and then we've got some low wind days that are kind of stormy but low winds so at least I'll get some fishing in and then I'll still kind of go into uh, specifics as I'm out there and be able to look at that boom right there see this see that on the water versus me just yakking at you so anyways thanks for watching check it out and I'll see you next video bye we're starting out here at Fort Zachary Taylor uh, Park it's basically right at the point of the Key West Harbor, which faces the Atlantic on that side, cruise around, and you have access to the Gulf. And alongside, running alongside parallel with the uh, Key West Harbor where the, the uh, cruise ships and the uh, Coast Guard would come through and tourist boats, is the Northwest Char uh, Channel out that way, which goes directly out to the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So these guys are going out fishing, most likely tarpon. So here there's a, a different type of fishing style that's unique for tarpon, and that's uh, actually chumming. So what the charter boats will do is they'll pick a spot, anchor up, uh, they'll bring uh, bags of chum. Now it's very similar to what I do with yellowtails, except I use a frozen block of uh, Menhaden chum. They go out and buy big bags, 25, 50 pound bags of uh, uh, bycatch from the shrimp boats. And they use that for their chum. Once they're on anchor, they start drifting back those uh, handfuls of uh, small dead bait fish and those flow with the outgoing tide. And then the tarpon that are sitting underneath here start coming up and eating those then the angler will drift back a bait with a hook in it and then you got a hook, you're uh, hooked up. The other ways that you can do it are dropping uh, a bait down to the bottom and bouncing along the bottom because most of the time, especially during the day, those tarpon are going to be sitting and resting along the bottom and looking up for a, a free meal. The third way is kind of a run and gun style and we'll, I probably pro do it mostly at the outlet so we'll go out there and check that out. Although it looks smooth out here, you have to watch out for this. All the boats, you got all the uh, jet skis, you got the cruise ships, you got the uh, charter boats, uh, you got the Coast Guard, so it's not the funnest uh, stress relief type of fishing. You gotta be very careful. Uh, right now it looks somewhat calm because the wind is coming straight over the keys and it's knocking it down before it's hitting this area here, but it actually will get really rough there and out where we're going. So let's go check that out. So here is the wraparound for the Atlantic to the harbor. As you can see, it's pretty rough right now because of the wind. You gotta be very careful out here because of that wind, because of the uh, current. You have all the boats, jet skis running around this corner. Definitely very dangerous. The strategy for uh, tarpon out here is actually to sight fish. You look for schools of uh, rolling tarpon, run and gun at them, and then just lob a bait in their direction and see what happens. I like to come out to the evening right at this corner, right at sunset, and uh, drop uh, pinfish or grunts, crabs, and just kind of drift them around this corner. Okay, here we are on Shark Channel Bridge. 
Okay, here we are on Shark Channel Bridge and looking out onto Shark Channel. The reason why, well, this is my kind of backyard spot that I prefer, but the reason why there's so much of attraction for tarpon here is that this is the only gateway for the Gulf of Mexico on that side to get to the Atlantic here all the way from the uh, Boca Chica channel and then going up to Sugarloaf channel. So this is the mage, fucking A. Here we are at Shark Channel. This is kind of my home base spot. Uh, as you can see, there's a wide basin here, which is good. The main reason why this spot sticks out is that it is the only passageway from the Gulf of Mexico through Shark Channel under the bridges here and then out to the Atlantic. So outside of going through Boca Chica Channel to the uh, west and then Sugarloaf to the east, this is the only significant through fare for the tarpon or current basically. So that's why you tend to get a lot more. It's also a very large natural basin with a lot of deep cuts and deep channels cut through it for uh, tarpon to lay up. Plus it's got some nice grassy flats for uh, feeding on. So that's kind of the main attraction here. Except for the fact that it's like crazy windy. Generally there'll be boats out here fishing because it is a very popular spot, but not when it's like 20, 25 knots. One thing to keep in mind when you're thinking about fishing the bridge is down in the lower keys, we don't have the deeper channels where the uh, tarpon tend to uh, gather like you see on the TV shows. Ours are surrounded by flats, so as you can see, this is only about one foot deep, if that, running all the way across the edge there. There's a little bit deeper underneath the bridges, but it's not enough to hold a, a school of tarpon. The middle keys ones, those are extremely wide. They could run for miles wide. Plus they can average between 15 to 30 feet deep throughout that whole channel. So that's where you tend to find the big massive schools of uh, tarpon holding and a lot of boats fishing and uh, bridge fishing for tarpon. Okay, here we are at Bahia Honda Bridge. Got the new bridge. Got all the guys lined up on their specific little cut between the bridge. This is the old bridge that basically parallels it. And then you head out to the Atlantic. So the way that it works here at the Bahia Honda Bridge and these Middle Keys bridges, you generally will anchor up, up current of one of the bridge sections. You'll generally uh, pick out whichever piling that you like. Here, the main channel is in that center section where all those boats are, and there it's probably 20 to 35 feet there. The tarpon will sit in those cuts and just hang out in massive schools. As the food comes by, they'll come up and eat it. So what these guys are doing, they're on anchor. They'll put out a blue crab, because this, this section is the blue crab is the primary bait. They'll have a little bit of weight because there's so much current here, and then holding it up and suspending it is a balloon or a float. They just let that drift into the current where the bridge is and just hope for something to pick it up. Once they get that bite, then they basically come off anchor and start chasing that fish around because it'll start going in and out of the bridge pilings from the Gulf to the Atlantic side, around where all the other boats are with the anchors. As you can see, it's uh, really windy today and still guys are out because there's people that are willing to spend $500 to $1,000 just to catch one of these tarpon. Now even though it's blowing 20-25 knots, I count eight boats out here fishing for the tarpon. So this is a good indicator if you start seeing that many uh, boats around that it's going to be a good spot. I mean seriously think about it how busy it gets over here when the weather is nice and we start getting into the full tarpon swing. This is still early and crappy weather and there's still eight boats out here. Now for me, I hate that style of combat fishing. I find it just as productive to come along this edge here of the channel and fish these eddy spots on these corner wraparounds 
these bays that follow right along the edge of these uh, channels. So this whole spot here, it's shallower, but fish will get out of that current and start going up on these flats. When you have such a massive school out in the center there, there's going to be fish out in these side spots and I find it a lot more peaceful and a lot less uh, risky trying to fish them. Woohoo! Parkour! What? That bridge is fine. Here we are on the northwest corner of the bridge. This is actually my favorite spot because it's out of the way but yet there's still a deep channel that runs along this side of the edge cut in by the current and then it comes up on this grassy flat right here just right off the edge. So I, a lot of times I'll find the tarpon moving up on this uh, flats here and feeding and it's a perfect spot to throw a uh, big hoagie or one of my nine inch paddle tails that you can find at allaboutthebait.com. See you have such beautiful flats running along that channel there. Much nicer places to fish out of the crowd. <laughs> 